Kwakko throws out appeal by ENI seeking to challenge government's directive on unitizing Afina and Sankofa oil fields. Also coming up tonight, we examine the impact of fuel price hikes on trading activities. We have a report from the Agogoshi market where traders say they are recording a dip in sales. After the increment of petroleum products, the customers are not showing up to purchase the foodstuff. The customers cannot afford some of them. Life is unbearable for us. This is Ecole Tahers International, a bilingual learning institution offering all-rounded education for children and practical business French for professionals. Those stories and others coming up in this half hour of business news. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for joining us. Details in a moment. tonight with some news from the oil and gas sector. An acquired high court has thrown out a request by Italian oil firm ENI to halt the unitization of its fields with that of Springfield. George Raffae has been going through the court documents and has this update. Rai High Court Commercial Division presided over by Justice Kwesi Mensah and his ruling described the appeal as incompetent based on how the request was submitted. There were also concerns about the release being sought by ENI and Vitol, which was not in line with the rules of the court. It also maintained that the Minister of Energy at that time, of issuing the directive that the Afina and Sankofa World should be unified, acted within the laws of the land as well as the laws covering the various petroleum agreements in the country. ENI and Vitol, following this ruling, have lost all their appeals seeking to challenge this directive. The recent one was when they tried to stop the creation of an escrow account for all the oil exploration funds to be placed in it while the issues were still in court. This might have led them to take the matter to the International Court of Arbitration in London for a final ruling on this issue. Some experts have warned that delays in resolving this matter is seeing Ghana lose millions of dollars. ENI and Vettel on April 12 this year filed an appeal seeking to challenge the Energy Minister's directive on utilization of the Afina oil discovery in the West Cape Three Points in the Sankofa oil field. Also tried to challenge the declaration that the minister did not follow due process of the law in issuing the purported directive, an order seeking to stop Springfield from taking any action to enforce this directive. But all these requests were thrown out by the court. That story is still developing. We are keeping eyes on it for you. Now, traders at the agribusiness market here in Accra have indicated that the increment in the price of petroleum products has taken a toll on their sales. The price of fuel has gone up several times this year, and there are more hikes expected as the price of Brent crude rises on the international market. James Ishan visited the agribusiness market to examine the impact of the fuel price hikes on the operations of traders has been consistent upward trend in the price of food in the country recently. According to the Ghana Statistical Service, food inflation in the month of September stood at 10.9%. We are here at the Agroglossi market to speak to this market women to know how they've been impacted, especially with the price of petroleum products being increased. Um, 
increment na come on na me say say ni ma no boy dey so o mo dey buy say o mo see petrol no boy dey food stuff are really expensive these days because the drivers who convey a yam to the market charge us more the customers are also not buying the yam na say mo na ya two petrol mo ni diesel mo ni adie o mo mo kofa mo ni o ma ba no eh at say they are na ni o mo ji na na no mo ji na say after the increment of petroleum products the customers are not showing up to purchase the food stuff the customers cannot afford some of them yeah bread because all your boy your thing and me me am dey on life is unbearable for us buying oil from the market has been very expensive we are really suffering five your first 3 million and this am to your tray na me say 20 million wa wa mo send me to me afa I sell cow meat. Conveying the meat to the market is really expensive these days. A pound of cow meat is now 12 cities, but it was 9 cities, 50 pesos previously. Mm. It appears it's similar here in the market. The market women are all basically complaining that it's not been easy for them here in the market. Our food staffs is already, you could see it with me here. But when you listen to the concerns of this market women, it clearly tells you that it's not been easy for them here. Um, it clearly tells you that there has been some increment in the prices of food products we have in the market. And this is definitely in line with the increment of petroleum products we have in the country. For Joy Business, James Ishen. All right, uh, James Ishen there with the story on the impact of uh, fuel price hikes on the cost of food items at the Agogoshi Market. You're watching Business Live. Still to come, the Joy Business Van visits Ecole Tahers International, a bilingual learning institution offering all-rounded education for children and practical business French for professionals. That story after this break. Continue that is to say, we continue here on Business Live. Partner at accounting and auditing firm Deloitte has called for the review of some taxes 
in the 2022 budget to boost businesses' capacity to create jobs. The finance minister is set to present next year's budget statement and economic planning in November. Now, speaking on the marketplace, Mr. Latte indicated that government needs to take bold and innovative measures to mobilize resources and empower the private sector to employ the teeming unemployed youth. On a whole, we've seen that government uh, programs and policies, some of them have been strictly implemented and are uh, uh, yielding some positive results. So if you see the first and second quarters of the year, the economy expanded by an average of about 3.5%. And those were largely driven by sectors, uh, some of which were hit by the pandemic. So strongly uh, driving the economy in the first half of the year is the services sector. All right. uh, particularly, we are seeing a lot of activity in the hotel and hospitality uh, subsectors of the service sector. All and right. I think um, those are good ones here. So what are expectations for that of 2022 to be presented next, next month? We, we're hearing the finance minister already hint of policies to guide entrepreneurship. Yeah, so I think um, for us, uh, some of the points that were made in the previous budget, which I guess we suggested to government to take another look at, was the new taxes that were introduced. All right. So, for instance, the national health insurance levy that was increased by one percentage point, uh, taxes that were introduced for the banking sector, financial sector cleanup. Once government reviews them, um, we expect businesses to benefit from those taxes here. In other news, Director of Crop Service at the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Seth Oseakutu, says organic fertilizers are environmentally friendly to the agriculture system. According to him, the promotion of organic agriculture is to educate farmers on the use of organic uh, fertilizers to increase productivity. He spoke at the National Dissemination and Policy Workshop for Productivity, Profitability and Sustainability of Organic Farming. There is more in this report policy and efforts to promote regenerative farming practices and promotion of ecological organic agriculture is to address challenges associated with negative impacts of climate change and combat food insecurity. At the workshop, Pro Eco Africa and Organic Food System Africa Research explained the benefits of using organic fertilizers. Here is the lead specialist, innovation systems and partnerships of Forum for Agriculture Research in Africa, Dr. Oluwole Fatumbi. As part of this, our research, we we have data to prove this, but it has not been fully analyzed. And so, we, the, based on speculation anyway, we can say that it is believed that a product from organic agriculture is safer, is better, because you are not going to be having pesticides, pesticides residue, for instance, in them. But how much of pesticides residue also do you find in product of conventional agriculture? You know, these are research issues that we must bring out concrete data and evidence that goes beyond one location okay to be able to make concrete um, response there is need to conduct more research and provide resources i mean when i say resources maybe technologies that will help us achieve higher productivity the director for crop service at the ministry of food and agriculture Dr. Seth Osei Akutu opined that organic fertilizers are environmentally friendly and will not cause harm to crop production. He also said the ministry is promoting the use of organic fertilizers to increase productivity in agriculture. When it comes to the adoption, most farmers are aware of the inorganic fertilizers rather than organic fertilizers. That is why concerted efforts are being made including what we have met here, for the whole world to know that organic fertilizers also can work if we increase the promotion and adoption of organic fertilizers into our farming systems. If you compare the inorganic fertilizers and organic fertilizers, we, have been, we believe that organic fertilizers are friendly in terms of environmental issues. And also, with the consciousness of some farmers or consumers uh, preferring organic food. So people are also conscious that if you go to the market, uh, organic fertilizers are, in terms of reference, is better. James Ishan's report for Joy Business. And that's our program tonight. Thanks for watching, everyone. There's more news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for watching. We are back same time tomorrow.